uh, when I was a kid, my parents were looking for a place. For, they were not Quakers, and they were looking for. Um, they were shopping around and looking at different uh, different uh, religious um, programs, religious education programs. And when they got to Framingham meeting, they said, "You know, we're here looking for a religious education program for our children. Can you tell us about it?" And the story is that the <laughs> elderly woman looked at my mom and said religious education don't you live your lives in a way that teaches your children what you believe and uh that was what sold my parents on coming to review a meeting um because i think that the teaching that we have to offer is about how we live Particularly when I think about the challenges of raising kids in our current culture, I think Quakerism has a lot to offer and how to parent in a way that is about raising kids to be whole and full human beings who have compassion and care for other people on this planet. Well, I think some of the biggest things that Quaker youth groups and youth programs have to offer youth are um, a space for reflection a space where the adults there trust that um, youth have a piece of the answer. And in Quakerism, I think that we, we, we really get the fact that, um, you know, the importance of nurturing our children and supporting them in their spiritual growth. Um, early on, uh, I think that that's really important. I think one of the great challenges of Quakerism is that what we do is so physically internal and meeting for worship that it can be very mysterious for kids. And so as a parent of a young child, one of the things I've really tried to work on with other adults and parents in the meeting is how do we make what I'm doing in meeting for worship something that my very wiggly four or five-year-old can connect to and understand. Um, our method in, in Putney Friends Meeting has been that the children do not come in initially when we start worship they come in for the last 15 minutes or so and have a joyous entrance <laughs> with lots of noise and lots of smiles and reuniting with their parents is a, is a joyful thing and it, it, it lifts the meeting up I think. I think that it is hard for kids sometimes to sit in meeting for worship and that's okay. I think it's hard for adults to sit in meeting for worship sometimes and that's okay. Um, a few years ago, I got together with some other parents and we did a 20 minute program before meeting for worship once or twice a month. It was open to anyone in the meeting, but it was geared towards four to eight year olds. And we did a lot of physical activities that mirrored the internal centering process. So ways of taking our bodies and coming to that centering energy, but always also with an outward expression for someone else. So we do kind of practice silence and we'll do kind of like a yoga pose and We'll, we'll have like contests in how long we can we hold the pose. It's a remarkable how kids who would think would never like be able to sit still for a second, if put in the right, right frame of mind, are able to do it pretty easily. When it comes to first day school and what will happen with your children, the most important thing is the sense of love and community that they will, you know, they will receive there. And that's primarily what will happen at Northampton meeting. Our model is one that we uh, started several years ago, which, is, which we call All Ages RE. Um, and that works by, we start an hour before worship, and we have adults and children joining together. And not only do we find it valuable in itself, but we've also found uh, that it's enhanced meeting for worship. Very often when friends come into worship, we hear themes in worship that have gotten started uh, in the AARE. So all of those kids both get to experience worship in the body with us and have that modeled for them and share with us and also get to have their own experiences where they talk about being a Quaker or Quaker testimonies or what worship actually is. And I think that's important for them to be able to have that freedom to just 
explore in their own way who God is um, and to be able to share with each other hand in hand um, you know the curiosities of their world and what's it mean to to be Quaker what's it mean to um, be spiritual when I was a child there was a lot of like making cookies and singing songs and uh, opportunities to just talk about what was important to us and to feel seen, to feel recognized, to feel whole, to, to feel like your contribution matters in the world um, and that there is a place for the uniqueness that you have. How Quakers approach religious education is really that being grounded in that belief that there is that of God in and all, all people and things. And I feel like that really is, um, that's the thread that we, I feel like that's at Burlington Friends Meeting too, is really, you know, meeting with the children and their families and seeing that of God in all of them. Um, and one of the things I really value about being a parent in this meeting is how many of the adults in the meeting make a point to get to know my kid, engage with my kid. Um, I had to travel for some family emergencies and friends in the meeting wrote him letters and let him know that he was being cared for even though his mom wasn't around. Um, and so there's a real sense of, of family in the meeting in that way. No matter if there's two kids or 20 kids, I feel like the spiritual journey of my individual child is also held by the meeting community. And when they ask her, how was worship today? They're actually asking her as a spiritual person, not just as a, a fun kid that did a craft or did a little dance. She loves crafts and dances too. But, <laughs> and that, that is crucial, I think. She feels like a member of the meeting. <laughs>